they're the ones making this fictional universe come alive. All right, places, everyone. Quickly, quickly. Cue the backdrop. Roll camp. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Mass Effect races. And action. For this list, we're taking a look exclusively at the fictional species in the Mass Effect universe. Sorry, Commander Shepard, no humans allowed. I hardly felt a thing. Number 10, the Volus. <sighs> Double pepperoni. For our first pick, we've got the Volus, a short and stubby race often associated with the Citadel, as they were the first race to establish an embassy on the Presidium. And to think my taxes pay to support you here. Their homeworld, named Irune, is a high-pressure planet with an ammonia-based ecology. Because of this harsh native atmosphere, they must wear breathers and pressure suits in pretty much any environment that would normally be hospitable to humans and other races. I'll speak with Citadel Security about this incident. Though not physically adept, the Volus have high influence on commerce and trade throughout the Citadel. Who's going to pay the bill? Number 9, the Elcor. Hello there, human. Originally from the planet Takuna, the Elcor are massive and stand on four legs for stability purposes. Mixed pride and shame. Our enemies have called us living tanks. They move extremely slowly since they evolved on a high gravity homeworld where a fall to the ground could be harmful or even fatal. Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? Even though some Elcor are seen on the Citadel and other colonies, most prefer not traveling in space because of their size, since they find the limitations of space travel to be uncomfortable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. To avoid misunderstanding due to their monotone voices, the Elcor prefix all their dialogue with emotive statements to clarify their tone. Relief. Thank you, Commander. Number 8. The Protheans. Those who share my purpose become allies. Those who do not become casualties. Mysteriously vanishing 50,000 years before the start of Mass Effect 1, the Protheans once reigned over a galaxy-wide empire and were extremely technologically advanced, as evidenced by the relics they left behind. We never finished it. It was too late. Protheans have a number of unique biological features, including eyes that can see through cloaking devices and the ability to essentially read another being's mind or recall their experiences simply by touching them. I sense you the lineage of a leader, a warrior's skill and cunning. They are strong in your genes. Though it was once thought that they had created the mass relays, their true fate is much more grim. I never thought our empire would fall. It won't. Number seven, the Drell. This was to be my last job. A reptilian race with deep religious practices, they once inhabited a dying homeworld before they made first contact with the Hanar and were rescued. Well, here I am. Since the Drells emerged from an arid, desert-like planet, humid climates are intolerable to them and often lead to fatal, degenerative diseases in the long run. I spent 10 years dead. I understand the feeling. They also possess strong eidetic memories, which essentially amounts to photographic memory, allowing them to recall moments from the past in perfect clarity. This slams the table. She comes to me. Fingers cool and soothing. They be alive with me tonight. Whether they want to or not. Some of us disappear into, you know, let's call it solipsism. Number six, the Geth. You look different. We have made ourselves visually distinct for your convenience. The Geth are a race of sentient robots controlled by advanced, networked artificial intelligence. We will ensure there are no transfers or backups. This server will fall silent. Created by the Quarians, who we'll get to in a second, the Geth were once essentially slaves created for work and warfare. We do not intend physical harm to the creators at this time. However, after they became sentient and started asking one too many questions, the Quarians attempted to wipe them out in an all-out war, a war which saw the Geth victorious and the Quarians reduced to a single nomadic fleet. The creator's actions have placed their species in danger. It is because of this disastrous misuse of artificial intelligence that all AI in the galaxy is illegal and systematically repressed. The Geth only acted in defense after the creators attacked. Do we deserve death? Number five, the Solarians. In the battle today, we will hold the line. Native of the planet Sirkesh and the second species to join the Citadel, the Solarians move, think, and talk fast due to their metabolism. 
I'm quite good at genetics as a subset of biology because I am an expert which I know is a tautology. The downside to this is that they have very short lifespans that rarely go above 40 years old. It, it could be a fabrication. They are known as one of the founders of the Citadel Council due to their scientific prowess and enhanced brain function. Hate waiting for culture analysis. Never fast enough. Usually no result in advance. Just checking work. Have to be careful. Their advanced science is also a source of great intergalactic guilt for them, however, since in order to end a war with the Krogans, they created the Genophage to sterilize and essentially doom the entire race. Dalatras, is this true? Well, will curing the Genophage benefit my people? Number four, the Asari. A balance of power exists in the galaxy that we don't wish to upset. Known for their diplomacy, the Asari were the first species to discover the Citadel, and are the ones who proposed and founded the Citadel Council. But there was more to it than that. As a monogender race, they are feminine in appearance. However, they have the ability to reproduce with any species or gender. You make it sound so chaotic, so dangerous. Originally from the planet Thessia, all Asari have natural biotic aptitude because of the strong traces of Element Zero found there. Thessia has always been an oasis in a galaxy full of turmoil. Asari can also live almost a thousand years, a life cycle which is divided into three stages called the Maiden, the Matron, and the Matriarch, respectively. Sometimes I wonder how you do it. Number three, the Turians. I can't wait to find out what brings you out here. Natives of the planet Palavin, the Turians are widely known for their disciplined and militaristic culture, especially in the Citadel. I can't give you what you need but I can tell you how to get it. They are most respected due to their public services, like Citadel Security Services, or CSEC, and their contributions in the form of starships and soldiers to the Citadel fleet. Take care of the wounded and scavenge what you can. I want us out of here ASAP. You heard the boss, move it. The Turians were the third species to join the Citadel Council. Though they gained their council seat after helping to quell the Krogan Rebellion, there is still some animosity between the Turians and humans since both races fought against each other in the first contact war. I've done all I can to help. The rest is up to you. Number two, the Quarians. Permission granted. Welcome home, Talizora. A tragic race, the Quarians became nomads after losing their homeworld, Rhinoch, to the Geth, resulting in them also losing the Citadel Council confidence and their own embassy. You know what Quarians are like. <laughs> Most Quarians now live on the Migrant Fleet, a massive collection of starships that roams the galaxy. We've got the largest fleet in the galaxy. If you can help us, we'll hit the Reapers with everything we've got. As a rite of passage into adulthood, coming-of-age Quarians must undertake a pilgrimage outside the fleet as proof that they will not be a burden on the convoy's limited resources. If we don't think about the needs of the whole crew, people could get hurt. Although living on board spaceships all their lives does make Quarians quite adept at engineering and tech, Generations living in sterile environments and the constant threat of a hull breach means that all Quarians essentially wear Enviro suits at all times. The most intimate thing we can do with another Quarian is link our suit environments. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. This is not your domain. You have breached the darkness. The truth of the Enkindlers must be made known. They gave the Han our language and gave the universe the mass relays. I didn't destroy your people, Balak. The Reapers did that. We were a proud race. A beautiful race. Have you seen what the Reapers have done to us? Number one, the Krogan. Nobody said anything about this. Originally from Tachunka, the Krogan are a large reptilian species that live in a harsh and unforgiving world. We flay our enemies alive and drown them in a geyser of their own blood. Artificially sterilized by the Genophage, the Krogan are usually distrustful of all other races. And the very few females that remain almost never leave their homeworld in an attempt to avoid extinction. You can stay here and let old wounds fester as Krogan have always done. Or you can fight the enemy you were born to destroy. Spartan-esque in culture, the Krogans respect strength above all, as the worst insult you can utter to a Krogan is, you're not worth killing. <laughs> Both vicious warriors and lovable goofs, strong but tragic, the Krogans are the perfect example of the depth sewn into the Mass Effect universe. Ever since we cured the Genophage, it's been nothing but work. Do you agree with our list? They'll sing battle songs about this someday. What's your favorite Mass Effect species? You've come too far. For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.
Oh, don't make me laugh. Damn it, my face is barely holding together as it is. Oh.